Hi, this is Toby with HMC Electronics. We're going to be doing an overview and also a how to assemble your Luxo 273 system. Just as with the single arm boom stand, construction of the dual arm starts with a very heavy base plate here. Um, just to, to note, when you're assembling your vertical post, and we went over this before, when you're assembling your vertical post, hang over about one third of the heavy base plate, <laughs> not too much so that it drops on your foot. Hang over one third of the base plate, take your three set screws, drop those in with the washers, and then screw on the vertical post. You're going to find this to be the easiest way to assemble the post. So uh, I'll just drop these in and then we'll come right back. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The, the Luxo boom stand microscopes really are the quickest and easiest to assemble. So your vertical post uh, came with this locking collar already attached. Uh, purpose of this locking collar, you'll see that when we actually get the whole thing set up, but uh, just leave it where it is, it belongs there. So here is your, your dual arm. Uh, everything is completely assembled already. There is nothing you need to put on it. Again, if you look at the single arm boom stand, uh, that cross block came assembled. It could be removed, but on cheaper microscopes, it often, often is not uh, assembled. Uh, on the Luxo unit, pretty much out of the box. This is about all you're adjusting right here, and you're, and you're good to go. Um, attaching this collar here, this is so that you can make adjustments, and if you accidentally let go, you know that your microscope isn't going to come crashing down to the table. So what I generally recommend is wherever you're going to set your microscope, set your lock ring collar uh, just an inch, two inches below. And uh, I haven't tightened on the, the final lock and collar here, but you can get an idea of just the full fluid range of motion that you get with the dual arm boom stand versus the standard single arm. So it is now fully assembled. This one toggle bolt right here that is your adjustment for how far forward back, your, your horizontal, your one toggle in the back is loosened, tightened. Again, your lock and collar staying pretty close and it is all assembled. Uh, no time whatsoever, less than five minutes to assemble a Luxo dual arm boom stand. So you have your boom stand assembled right here. Uh, a couple things we'll just go over very quickly on it. Luxo incorporates a drop tilt arbor with all of their boom stands. What's a drop tilt arbor? This is a drop tilt arbor. Why is that cool? It is cool because it enables you to look at your product, your circuit board, whatever device it is that you're handling at an angle and have the microscope set at an angle. So we'll attach the E-arm right now and you'll get a good idea of how that works. Attaching your E-arm, what's an E-arm? This is an E-arm. Attaching your E-arm very simply, uh, unscrew this bolt down here. Slide this up. Some people attach it upside down. It'll still work. I just don't think it should be attached upside down. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. There you go. I sing while I assemble. Excuse me. There we go. And this is on. Okay, so a couple of safety features that we already went over. So it has this wonderful locking collar to make it so that the microscope doesn't come crashing down to the table. Thank goodness I tightened that up enough. There we go. Another one on the bottom of your drop tilt arbor. This knob and washer is larger than the opening on your E-arm. I wouldn't advise doing that over and over again, but it is good to note that you do have a number of things that are preventing your operator from accidentally, while they're adjusting things, uh, coming and uh, destroying your equipment. So, we have our E-arm assembled, which obviously can be rotated as needed this way. Uh, knob in the back sets it in place. Now this is the 273 Luxo microscope. I'm going to use this opportunity to complain about Luxo's part numbering system. The 273 Luxo microscope is included with any microscope system that starts 237. Riddle me that one, Batman. So, talking again about this drop tilt arbor. Now, other companies do offer drop tilt arbors. They charge you extra for it. Luxo includes it with their dual arm and with their single arm. So, if you think about your application, if you do not have a drop tilt arbor, you can only look at a product this way. And if you need to see that product in any other fashion, you have to take the product and tilt it. 
And if you're tilting it with your hands, how do you get any work done? With a like so, you tilt your scope, not your product. Product remains flat on the surface. Your hands are all free to do as you need. So in the prior generation, the 250 Luxo unit, there were a few differences. Um, one of the ones that I think is a rather cool improvement on the 273 is this little collar right here. Hoping I'm getting that uh, in the shot for you. So this little ridge cut into the microscope acts as your ring light guide. Or I should say your, your ring light adapter so that you can attach your ring light. Um, what I just screwed on is the lens protector. In the 250, the lens protector and ring light adapter were one. So if you're using a ring light, it was pretty easy to remember to attach this lens because if you didn't attach it, you really couldn't attach your ring light. On this unit, your operator or you could accidentally not attach this lens protector. I would not advise that. You do not want the optical path being left open you do not want it to be subject to any sort of fumes or even an accidental touching. Uh, this obviously here, as I just put my fingers all over it, will now produce an image that has my finger oils all over it. So better to put this on, which you can then wipe, than leave your, your microscope open to the elements. So very important that you attach this. Um, one other thing um, that is most significant for the improvement on the 273 series is the working distance. Uh, standard 273 without any 0.5x uh, reducer lens or an auxiliary lens as sometimes referred to has a working distance of 4 inches. Uh, it has a magnification high end of 45x. 45x was also about the same power as you're getting on your, your 250. So no real difference in the magnification. That working distance though, if you add an auxiliary lens, or add a reducer lens, part number 23750, that's right, I go home and I memorize all of these. Uh, 23750 will cut the magnification range down to 22.5, which is still way more than you really should be needing for a uh, electronics application. 22.5x, you have got eight inches of working distance, loads of working distance to get a soldering iron under there. I don't know, what else would you get under a soldering iron? You could probably get a wrench, plumber's wrench, hammer, whatever you need to get. There's just loads of working distance. And that's a, that's a huge bit of difference. That, that eight inch working distance really sets this unit apart. You're not hunched over as you try to do your inspection. You've got plenty of room to sit back and, and see nice and clearly what you're working on. So let's uh, finish up assembly. Okay, so I have now attached the 23750, kept my grubby little paws off it, so I've got a nice clean image. Set screw, holding this in place. Drop in my super wide field lenses, so that I can see a super wide field. And now, when you are setting up a microscope, gosh, I don't know my answer, there we go. Uh, when you're setting up a microscope, there is something called parfocaling, parfocaling of your microscope. Basically what that means is you are going to get your working distance set up. So you're going to get this, and that's what the auxiliary lens, we're going to get it eight inches away from a product. We are going to increase the magnification all the way to its highest power. We are then going to get it by fine tuning through the E-arm adjustment so that we have the cleanest, crispest image at the highest power. You can then back off your magnification and you should be able to move through the full range of magnification and it will always be in focus. Here's what we see people doing. They get a microscope, set to the lowest setting, set it to the lowest setting, they try to get it in focus. It's in focus at the lowest setting. Then they dial it up and it's out of focus and they make a small change. And then they dial it down and they make a small change. Parfocaling, parfocaling is the way to go. We're going to attach the standard uh, Luxo uh, fluorescent ring light adapter. Uh, fluorescent, uh, Luxo also has a beautiful LED um, uh, light as well. I'm sure Ariel will add that somewhere along the bottom of the video in a pop-up window or something like that, which is absolutely beautiful. But we're just going to attach the fluorescent, which I will say they put out a very nice fluorescent light. It gives off 
uh, a lot more light than those uh, $99, $75 uh, fluorescent ring lights that seem to be on every website right now. So I'm going to set this up and then uh, we'll figure out a way that you can see what I'm seeing through the iPods. One last thing, these turrets here, uh, as they adjust in and out, that is for your interpupillary spacing. Each operator obviously is going to have eyes slightly different spacing apart um, as you adjust these turrets. That's what that's for. So that's for your operator comfort. So here we go. If you have any questions about the Luxo 273 system or any of the Luxo microscopes or magnification products, you are welcome to check out our website. There's a ton of information there. You can email us or just pick up the phone and give us a call. Thanks for watching and happy soldering.